about something relatively simple and that you probably have experience with. Basic computer fans. Um, I'm, no, I'm not going to get into RGB or pixel addressabilities or any of that stuff in this video. I want to talk about something relatively simple that you probably noticed but might not have paid attention to. Some fans have two wires, some have three, and some new ones, especially on like CPU things, have four. Why is this and what purpose do they serve? Let's get started. Let's start off simple. Two wire fans like this one are really simple. You have a positive and a negative and they're connected to the two ends of a motor. If I take this and I connect it to a 12 volt power supply, say like my LED strips here, the fan spins. Now, one of the disadvantages of these two-wire fans and why people preached for the three-wires was, was that supposedly the three-wire fans had speed control, whereas these didn't. Um, and that's not really the case, but it ended up being the case on computer hardware for one reason or another. So let's talk about why. These two-wire fans, as I said, are relatively simple. You connect them to power and they turn. Technically, you have full speed control over them. You want the fan to go faster, you put more voltage. Instead of connecting this to 12 volts, if I connect it to 5 volts, as you can see, it turns. Um, I do have to short some lights there to get it to exactly 5 volts. The difference is, it's slower. And you'd think that this is exactly what you need in a computer. But the way it usually went down, unfortunately, is that if you had the two-wire fan like this, um, this is an old chassis fan, for example, which, what happened was you would just take the two leads, uh, apologies for these being the same color, I didn't have any other wires, and you plug them in straight into the power supply. Now, as you might imagine, if your power supply is delivering a constant 12 volts, which, you know, normally it was, your fan would always spin at 12 volts, which is full power. So, in a sense, yes, you didn't get speed control, because what you, what you truly wanted from the fan is you wanted it to ramp up or ramp down based on you know the temperature of your computer. If your computer is pretty chilly, you don't need the fan. If your computer is overheating, you want the fan to go faster, right? It's pretty simple. But the simple two-wire fans being connected just to the power supply did not have that speed control. Now, could you have gotten speed control on a two-wire fan? Absolutely. If motherboard vendors wanted, they would have just you could have just been able to connect the fan over to the motherboard and it could have just controlled the voltage. But that's not how it went down. So now let's talk about 3-pin fans. 3-pin fans almost always did have voltage control, especially on older systems. Some new modern boards don't have the hardware for it, but your 3-wire fan would, at least at the time, have had speed control. So why is that? And what does the third wire do? Unlike what you might think about how like you give 12 volts and then your third wire is used for, you know, like controlling the speed or whatnot, it's actually kind of the reverse. You give the fan the voltage that you want to give it, exactly like a two-wire fan with the two wires. The third wire is for a tachometer, and that reports to the computer what RPM the fan is running at. So for a traditional three-wire fan like this, your two uh, wires, if you look on the pin here, the two leftmost wires are for your ground, black is ground, and red is 12 volts, even though technically I think that's kind of... Anyway, that's a separate rant uh, that I'll get into in a minute and your yellow is actually for your tachometer so this is basically going to report the RPM of your fan back to the motherboard. If I just take the two wires then, right, if I uh, pull this back you can see, if I take the black and the red wire and I plug this into the same way, unfortunately this, these wires don't reach as well so uh, my arm is going to have to cast a shadow here and I uh, connect this over to 12 volts Not sure if you can see that, but the fan turns, right? Maybe I will hold this with one hand. There you go. Fan turns. Similarly, if I connect it to 5 volts, the fan will turn slower, so on and so forth. So it's actually basically how you would speed control the two-wire fan. Now, this means that you need some additional hardware on the motherboard. A, you need sensors to check the temperature, but considering that most, I mean, I guess modern computers have temperature controls anyway in order to thermal throttle to make sure you don't burn the thing up. Um, the next thing you need is you need an analog voltage source. So if your motherboard exclusively runs off 12 volts, 
this isn't going to work because you need to be able to have a voltage source that you can dynamically ramp up and down in order to control the speed of the fan. So you need an analog voltage generator, basically. Obviously, this is easy to do if you're just on a breadboard, right? You would have your 12 volts and then do like a uh, voltage divider with a potentiometer on one of them and you can get voltage control or you can use any number of like even simple linear voltage regulators and just change the voltage on them. There's a ton of chips that do this, but obviously it means extra complexity on the motherboard and that's extra price, so on and so forth. The yellow wire is then used for the actually for the motherboard to know how the fan is actually what RPM it's running at. Now on some modern motherboards, actually, they don't really, they support three wire fans, but not speed control. So if I plug this in, I can get, the fan will always run at 12 volts, and all the tachometer does is the motherboard just uses it to make sure that the fan isn't broken, basically, that it's not at zero. Um, so it can be used for RPM monitoring rather than, you know, I guess indicating what the RPM is. But basically, it's just a feedback source for the computer to know uh, how the fan is doing. Now that's important for one aspect which is that different fans start and stop at different voltages so obviously 12 volts is full power but for example this fan will run as low as 4 volts whereas some fans will be able to get down to even like 3 volts and they'll still run and some fans the moment you go below like 9 volts they'll just stop turning because of like huge friction in the motor and whatnot. So um, I guess that varies. So again, that, I guess let's talk about the final and I guess most modern one, that, and that's 4-pin uh, fans. Unfortunately, I have two of them beside me, but they're connected to my computer, so I'm not about to uh, shut that down for this simple video. So 4-pin fans, as the name suggests, have 4 pins. And what's the 4th pin for? Well, the 4th pin these days is used for PWM, or pulse with modulation. You might have heard about how we dim LEDs using pulse with modulation, right? That's basically when you turn a source on and off so quickly uh, that... In the case of dimmable LEDs, your eyes don't notice that it's flickering and it looks dimmer. But in the case of motors, it's that the fan physically cannot speed up and slow down that much due to its sheer like momentum or inertia. So uh, basically, you'll end up with the motor will end up getting the average of. So if I was on for half the time and off for half the time and it was pulsing it quickly enough, it would basically be the fan running at half speed. That's basically how the new pulse with modulation works. Now this has a couple advantages. A, pulse with modulation, you can get the fan to much slower speeds than you could with traditional voltage dimming, right? So as I said, some fans stopped at 6 volts, whereas if you're using pulse with modulation, you can slow the fan down to even 5 or 10%. You get a lot more granular control. The second benefit is you can keep running the fan at 12 volts, and all you need is a pulse with modulation source, which is a lot easier to get. You basically just have to turn that 12, voltage, 12 volt uh, source on and off quickly enough. So some modern, for example, my current computer with the Super Micro motherboard, if you connect 4-pin fans, it will be able to control the speed and it'll also give you the RPM via IPMI. If you connect 3-pin fans, you'll get the RPM from the tachometer, but you don't get the, volt, get, you don't get the um, speed control because it's permanently 12 volts. They don't have any voltage regulators to set variable voltage. So you get simpler motherboard uh, circuitry to some extent because you don't need to be generating obscure uh, analog voltages. Now, for example, why aren't fans like this one 4-pin? Well, that's because the motherboard becomes cheaper-ish to build, but your fans become more expensive because we need something to... Uh, in the end, you're going to need some additional circuitry with the motor to make sure that it works because it's not as simple as turn the voltage source on and off quickly enough because, well, some of you might be thinking, why don't we just take the red and black wires here on a 3-pin and just turn it on and off fast enough, right? Won't that do the same thing? And not exactly, because for the modern 4-pin fans, you end up always giving 12 volts to the motor, and then you have, like, the additional circuitry. So this is a simple fan, right? This one only draws 0.16 amps, but you can have, like, 1 amp fans for servers and stuff. So in that case, you get the full power over the regular wires, and then your pulse voltage modulation 4th pin just delivers what the speed should be. And that's about it. That's um, another somewhat, I guess, useless nerdy video about two versus three versus four pin computer fans, uh, what the advantages and disadvantages are. Uh, what should you buy for your next computer? Honestly, if your motherboard can do three pin fans, you don't need to have the additional expense for four pin. It's probably not worth it. These are about five bucks each. The moment you go, at least in Canadian dollars, the moment you go four pin, you end up having to pay closer to 10. Uh, two wires, these are really cheap on stuff like eBay. For example, this one actually came, as I said, came from an old computer chassis, one of the old beige boxes, you know. 
and it had a Molex pin on it, which is what told me it was straight up connected to the power supply. So Molex is the historic four pin connector used on hard drives and optical drives and so on and so forth. And of course I cut that out and I just wired it like this so that I could jam it into a fan header. Which of course didn't work because the motherboard taught it was at zero RPM. So I ended up having to splice in the tachometer from another fan to get it to work. Anyway, that's a separate story. I wouldn't be connecting fans via Molex these days just because you really don't need to, right? If your computer is running cool, why would you have all your fans spinning at full speed generating heat as well? Also, it's loud. This fan is louder than this one, right? Oh, I mean, that might also just be because this is a bigger fan and bigger means lower RPM for the fan same amount of air, which means quieter. But anyway, that's been this somewhat nerdy video on uh, computer fans, what the differences are, so on and so forth. Thanks for watching this somewhat random video on computer fans and 2 versus 3 versus 4 pin fans. Hopefully you found it interesting, hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see some other random videos like this one, my last, I guess, big um, explanatory video was on like Linux Audio Explained, please consider subscribing to my channel or leaving a like on this video. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day.